Guys, if you're wondering what the heck's going on here, this guy's got tape on his optic. It's called occluded shooting. It's a great technique. Stick with me here and I'll tell you all about it. So shooting occluded has been a technique that really helped me transition from iron sights to red dots. Red dots are extremely advantageous, especially if your eyes are changing. I can pick my target up a lot faster. I can actually shoot faster. I can transition to targets faster, but the technique you use when shooting a red dot requires you, or you should use two eyes, and shooting occluded forces you to use both eyes. So what we're doing is we're using tape. You can see I've got painter's tape here. But I prefer to use painter's tape when I'm doing this occluded shooting technique because it doesn't have a lot of extra adhesive and you can see when I peel it off, it doesn't really leave any residue and I don't have to worry about uh, leaving a lot of extra sticky stuff on my optic. I'm actually covering the front of the lens. Can't cover the rear because you need to see the dot, right? So you're covering the front so you can't see the target with your dominant eye. It forces you to use your non-dominant eye to look downrange and see that target. Our brain has natural binocular vision. So what it does is it takes these two images. The image of the dominant eye is just the dot. I can't see my target, but I can see my dot. But if I focus with this eye, I can see my target. The brain merges those two images together to give you one clear image. And that's how you're able to actually shoot occluded. Shooting occluded forces you to keep that left eye open so that you focus on the target. Um, I haven't shot occluded for a while, but I've got the technique down pat. As you can see, it worked for me. So if you're transitioning from iron sights to red dots, if you are just new to red dots and you need to make sure you're using the proper technique, shooting occluded can help you use that proper technique and it can help you keep from cheating because sometimes we want to squint that non-dominant eye a little bit and really focus on that red dot. We really shouldn't be focusing on the dot we should be focusing through the dot onto the target. And another thing I wanna to mention to you guys is when you bring your dot up to your eye, you should be focusing on the target first. So when you bring that dot up, the dot comes into your plane of vision. That's a term I like to use, plane of vision. That's a straight line from your eye to the target. You want that dot to come up into that plane of vision. You don't wanna search for the dot. You want the dot to come up and appear in front of that target. I'll take my glasses off here. You can see I'm keeping both eyes open. With my right eye, I can see the dot. With my left eye, I can see the target. If I focus equally with both eyes, I have a clear view, I have great binocular vision merging into one image, and I'm able to shoot occluded. So guys, give it a try. So aside from sporting applications like USPSA or Steel Challenge or Action Shooting Sports, this really has a real world application in a self-defense scenario. Uh, look, we have to use our peripheral vision uh, in self-defense. If you wanna see what's around you, you wanna be able to go to that threat, see that threat. There may be more than one threat. If you're just focusing on that little dot on your target on that threat uh, with your eye closed, you're not gonna, this peripheral vision is gone. I can't even see my hand here but by keeping that eye open, I can see additional threats that come here or I can transition over here to another threat as well. So lots of practical applications, sporting and self-defense applications for shooting with an occluded dot as a training technique.